One of the most important things I think a person can do in their life is to get up and go and explore the world. When we arrived in Vegas, we actually landed in a massive rainstorm, and uh, the next morning we woke up to just this incredible flood that was rushing through the parking garage of our hotel, and it prevented us from getting out with the car, so we had to stick around for a few hours. Oh, uh, well, we've got some major flooding here. This is crazy. Well, here we are, day one, Las Vegas. It's windy, cold, pouring with rain. We'll drive to Death Valley, see if we can get anything. Fingers crossed. It just reminded me of, of the power of Mother Nature. You know, um, we can build these incredible structures, but if Mother Nature's got a way of doing things, there's not a whole lot that can stand in her way. All right, so we just got out of the uh, hotel parking lot. Uh, it's still flooding, but uh, they were able to clear a path and get us out of there, so got belly, here we come. So as a result of uh, our delay caused by the flood, I ended up with a little bit of a lead foot heading to the Mojave Desert. I was thinking about photos, not paying attention, and uh, we're being pulled over by the Nevada State Police. I was trying to get there for sunset, and unfortunately a Nevada State Trooper wasn't too fond of my excessive speeding. I have a court date. As it often tends to happen, you know, when things sort of slow you down, uh, you end up just getting different opportunities to photograph other things. Uh, so we were driving along the highway and came across this double rainbow, uh, pulled over to photograph it and ended up with an absolutely spectacular sunset. So that was really fortunate. Everywhere you look, it's just perfect, it's beautiful light. Point that camera in any direction and you're going to get something great. After dark and, and just a few miles from our hotel, we drove into this crazy lightning storm. And uh, so I pulled over the car and got out to, to capture some uh, long exposure shots of the lightning. It's still a little bright out, so what we've done is I've thrown a, a polarizer onto the lens and uh, taken the ISO way down. Uh, that's allowed me to lengthen my shutter speed down to 30 seconds. Uh, so fire a shot, wait for a bolt of lightning. If it doesn't happen within that 30 second window, just fire again. And all of a sudden this massive downpour of hail erupted and the crew and myself, we just got pelted with these big chunks of ice. Oh. Oh, yeah. We made it. Camera's sort of safe. A little wet, but we're good. While in Death Valley, the crew and I, we, we stayed at a really fascinating little place called the Amargosa Hotel. Um, here's a place in the middle of nowhere. Uh, this woman buys it uh, to put on her own dance performances. So she builds a theater, but of course nobody comes. So she paints her audience onto the walls of the theater and performs for them every night. So it's absolutely a fascinating little place and kind of a nice little surprise in the middle of the desert. That next morning we, we got up before dawn and we drove to a place called Badwater Salt Flats, which is in the heart of Death Valley. Uh, as we drove there, we quickly realized that the roads had, had fallen victim to the flash flooding that had come through the night before. So it was definitely a good thing that we had an SUV because we were able to kind of climb up and over the, the rubble and eventually make our way down to Badwater. The Badwater Salt Flats is the lowest point in North America. Um, it's actually 282 feet below sea level. I've always wanted to photograph uh, the Badwater Basin after it's flooded. 
uh, when this happens, the salt levels out and you get these ridges and patterns everywhere. So we've come out here to the Badwater Salt Flats and uh, we've stumbled across this really rare opportunity where early this morning we came in, we noticed there were a bunch of flash floods that had taken out the road. Obviously they've had a lot of water in this area and it's caused the landscape to sort of buckle and lift. Uh, it's a really unique thing for this area, they don't get it very often, so we're going to take the opportunity and shoot it. It's been said that the best filter for your camera uh, is an alarm clock, and it's true. Uh, typically the best times for photography are, are early in the morning and later at night, you know when the sun is at the lowest point on the horizon. Uh, it creates these long shadows and warm light and, and beautiful colors in the sky. When you can't get an aerial shot, just get a really long tripod, a timer. On that particular morning, there were some storm clouds brewing in the distance. So I exposed for the foreground, which caused the sky to appear uh, quite dark, and it kind of created these ominous, dramatic clouds off on the horizon. Later that day, we headed over to the Mojave Desert, uh, the sand dunes. Uh, going in, I knew that I didn't want to capture, you know, your typical postcard style images of the place. It's been done to death. So uh, what I really wanted to do was let the sun get really low on the horizon and focus in on the dramatic shadows that the, that light creates and, and the form and the contrast. Um, so what I did was eliminate as much of the background as I could and really get that frame in tight on just abstract patterns. I just, I love creating fine art out of uh, the elements that nature provides. 